Maxime Lenfran a section while Marie Isidore de Robespierre was a French lawyer and politician, and one of the best known and most influential figures of the French Revolution. As a member of the Estates General, the Constituent Assembly and the Jacobin Club, he advocated against the death penalty and for the abolition of slavery, while supporting equality of rights, universal suffrage and the establishment of a republic. He opposed dechristianization of France, war with Austria and the possibility of a coup by the Marquis de Lafayette. As a member of the Committee of Public Safety, he was an important figure during the period of the revolution commonly known as the Reign of Terror, which ended a few months after his arrest and execution in July 1794 following the Thermidorian reaction. The Thermidorians accused him of being the soul of the terror, although his guilt in the brutal excesses of the terror has not been proven. Influenced by 18th-century Enlightenment philosophes such as Rousseau and Montesquieu, he was a capable articulator of the beliefs of the left-wing bourgeoisie. His steadfast adherence and defense of the views he expressed earned him the nickname Incorruptible. His reputation has gone through cycles. It peaked in the 1920s when the influential French historian Albert Mathias rejected the common view of Robespierre as demagogic, dictatorial, and fanatical. Mathias argued he was an eloquent spokesman for the poor and oppressed, an enemy of royalist intrigues, a vigilant adversary of dishonest and corrupt politicians, a guardian of the French Republic, an intrepid leader of the French revolutionary government, and a prophet of a socially responsible state. However, his reputation has suffered from his association with radical purification of politics by the killing of enemies. Early life Maxime Lender Robespierre was born in Arras, in the old province of Artois, France. His family has been traced back to the 12th century in Picardy. Some of his direct ancestors in the male line were notaries in the village of Carvin near Arras from the beginning of the 17th century. He is sometimes rumored to have been of Irish descent, and it has been suggested that his surname could be a corruption of Robert Spies. George Henry Lewis, Ernest Harmel, Jules Michelet, Alphonse de Lamartine, and Hilaire Belloc have all cited this theory although there appears to be little supporting evidence. His paternal grandfather, Maxime Lender Robespierre, established himself in Arras as a lawyer. His father, Maxime Lenbach a copyright la copyright my friend a section war de Robespierre, also a lawyer at the Conseil de Troyes, married Jacqueline Marguerite Carrault, the daughter of a brewer, in 1758. Maxime Len was the oldest of four children and was conceived out of wedlock. His siblings were Charlotte, Henriette, and Augustine. In 1764, Madame de Robespierre died a few days after childbirth. Her husband subsequently left Arras and travelled throughout Europe, only occasionally living in Arras, until his death in Munich in 1777. The children were brought up by their maternal grandfather and aunts. Maxime Len attended the College E of Arras when he was eight years old, already knowing how to read and write. In October 1769, on the recommendation of the bishop, he obtained a scholarship at the Liquor Copyright E. Louis Le Grand in Paris. Robespierre studied there until age 23, receiving his training as a lawyer. Upon his graduation, he received a 600 livre special prize for 12 years of exemplary academic success and personal good conduct. In school he learned to admire the idealized Roman Republic and the rhetoric of Cicero, Cato and other classic figures. His fellow pupils included Camille Desmoulins and Stanislas Fra copyright Ron. He also was exposed to the writings of Jean-Jacques Rousseau during this time and adopted many of his philosophical principles. Robespierre became more intrigued by the idea of a virtuous self, a man who stands alone accompanied only by his conscience. Shortly after his coronation, King Louis XVI visited Louis Le Grand. Robespierre, then 17 years old and a prize-winning student, had been chosen out of 500 pupils to deliver a speech to welcome the king. Perhaps due to rain, the royal couple remained in their coach throughout the ceremony and promptly left at its completion. Early politics, as an adult, and possibly even as a young man, the greatest influence on Robespierre's political ideas was Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Robespierre's conception of revolutionary virtue and his program for constructing political sovereignty out of direct democracy came from Rousseau. And, 
In pursuit of these ideals, he eventually became known during the Jacobin Republic as the Incorruptible. Robespierre believed that the people of France were fundamentally good and were therefore capable of advancing the public well-being of the nation. After having completed his law studies, Robespierre was admitted to the Arras Bar. The Bishop of Arras, Louis Frenet Section Wa Marc Aledis and Zia Copyright, appointed him criminal judge in the Diocese of Arras in March 1782. Although this appointment did not prevent him from practicing at the bar, he soon resigned owing to discomfort in ruling on capital cases arising from his early opposition to the death penalty. He quickly became a successful advocate and chose, in principle, to represent the poor. During court hearings, he was known often to advocate the ideals of the Enlightenment and argue for the rights of man. Later in his career, he read widely, and also became interested in society in general. He became regarded as one of the best writers and most popular young men of Arras. In December 1783, he was elected a member of the Academy of Arras, the meetings of which he attended regularly. In 1784, he obtained a medal from the Academy of Metz for his essay on the question of whether the relatives of a condemned criminal should share his disgrace. He and Pierre-Louis de Lacretel, an advocate and journalist in Paris, divided the prize. Many of his subsequent essays were less successful, but Robespierre was compensated for these failures by his popularity in the literary and musical society at Arras, known as the Rosacea. In its meetings he became acquainted with Lazare Carnot, who would later become his colleague on the Committee of Public Safety. In 1788, he took part in a discussion of how the French provincial government should be elected, arguing in his address à la nation art à copyrights and that if the former mode of election by the members of the provincial estates were again adopted, the new estates general would not represent the people of France. It is possible he addressed this issue so that he could have a chance to take part in the proceedings and thus change the policies of the monarchy. King Louis XVI later announced new elections for all provinces, thus allowing Robespierre to run for the position of deputy for the Third Estate. Although the leading members of the corporation were elected, Robespierre, their chief opponent, succeeded in getting elected with them. In the assembly of the Bailiage, rivalry ran still higher, but Robespierre had begun to make his mark in politics with the Avis aux habitants de la campagne. With this, he secured the support of the country electors. And, although only thirty, comparatively poor, and lacking patronage, he was elected fifth deputy of the third estate of Artois to the estates general. When Robespierre arrived at Versailles, he was relatively unknown, but he soon became part of the representative National Assembly which then transformed into the Constituent Assembly. While the Constituent Assembly occupied itself with drawing up a constitution, Robespierre turned from the Assembly of Provincial Lawyers and Wealthy Bourgeois to the people of Paris. He was a frequent speaker in the Constituent Assembly, voicing many ideas for the Declaration of the Rights of Man and constitutional provisions, often with great success. He was eventually recognized as second only to par copyright Tion de Villeneuve Euro if second he was a Euro as a leader of the small body of the extreme left. The Thirty Voices as Mirabeau contemptuously called them. Jacobin Club, Robespierre soon became involved with the new Society of the Friends of the Constitution, known eventually as the Jacobin Club. This had consisted originally of the deputies from Brittany only. After the Assembly moved to Paris, the club began to admit various leaders of the Parisian bourgeoisie to its membership. As time went on, many of the more intelligent artisans and small shopkeepers became members of the club. Among such men, Robespierre found a sympathetic audience. As the wealthier bourgeois of Paris and right-wing deputies seceded from the club of 1789, the influence of the old leaders of the Jacobins, such as Barnave, Dupert, Alexander de Lameth, diminished. When they, alarmed at the progress of the revolution, founded the Club of the Phalanx in 1791, the left, including Robespierre and his friends, dominated the Jacobin Club. On May 15, 1791, Robespierre proposed and carried the motion that no deputy who sat in the constituent could sit in the succeeding assembly. The flight on June 20, and subsequent arrest at Varennes of Louis XVI and his family resulted in Robespierre declaring himself at the Jacobin Club to be ni monarchist ni ra copyright publicain. 
but this stance was not unusual. Very few at this point were avowed Republicans. In 1790 he lived at Rue de Saint-Ange, No. 9. At the time it was a remote area of the Tuileries. However, after the massacre on the Champ de Mars on July 17, 1791, fearing for his safety and in order to be nearer to the Assembly and the Jacobins, he moved to live in the house of Maurice Duplay, a cabinet maker residing in the Rue saint honore copyright and an ardent admirer of Robespierre. Robespierre lived there until his death. In fact, according to his doctor, Subabiel, Violet, a juror on the Revolutionary Tribunal, and his host's youngest daughter, he became engaged to the eldest daughter of his host, a Pamil la copyright en or Duplay. The sister of Maximilien claims that the wife of Maurice Duplay wished to marry her daughter to the incorruptible, but this hope was never realized. On September 30, on the dissolution of the Constituent Assembly, the people of Paris named par copyright Tion and Robespierre as the two incorruptible patriots in an attempt to honor their purity of principles, their modest ways of living, and their refusal of bribes and offers. With the dissolution of the assembly, he returned to Arras for a short visit, where he met with a triumphant reception. In November, he returned to Paris to take the position of public prosecutor of Paris. Opposition to war with Austria In February 1792, Jacques-Pierre Brichot, one of the leaders of the Girondist party in the Legislative Assembly, urged that France should declare war against Austria. Marat and Robespierre opposed him, because they feared the influence of militarism, which might be turned to the advantage of the reactionary forces. Robespierre was also convinced that the internal stability of the country was more important. This opposition from expected allies irritated the Girondists, and the war became a major point of contention between the factions. Robespierre countered, a revolutionary war must be waged to free subjects and slaves from unjust tyranny, not for the traditional reasons of defending dynasties and expanding frontiers. Indeed, argued Robespierre, such a war could only favor the forces of counter-revolution, since it would play into the hands of those who oppose the sovereignty of the people. The risks of Kesserism were clear, for in wartime the powers of the generals would grow at the expense of ordinary soldiers, and the power of the king and court at the expense of the assembly. These dangers should not be overlooked, he reminded his listeners. In troubled periods of history, generals often became the arbiters of the fate of their countries. Robespierre warned against the threat of dictatorship, stemming from war, in the following terms. Robespierre also argued that force was not an effective or proper way of spreading the ideals of the revolution. In April 1792, Robespierre resigned the post of public prosecutor of Versailles, which he had officially held, but never practiced, since February, and started a journal, Le Dar Copyright Fenceur de la Constitution. The journal served multiple purposes, countering the influence of the royal court in public policy defending Robespierre from the accusations of Girondist leaders, and also giving voice to the economic interests of the broader masses in Paris and beyond. The National Convention When the Legislative Assembly declared war against Austria on April 20, 1792, Robespierre responded by working to reduce the political influence of the officer class, the generals and the king. While arguing for the welfare of common soldiers, Robespierre urged new promotions to mitigate domination of the officer class by the aristocratic Apermil Cold Militaire. Along with other Jacobins he also urged the creation of popular militias to defend France. This sentiment reflected the perspective of more radical Jacobins including those of the Marseille Club, who in May and June 1792 wrote to par copyright Tion and the people of Paris, here and at Delon we have debated the possibility of forming a column of 100,000 men to sweep away our enemies. Paris may have need of help. Call on us. Because French forces had suffered disastrous defeats and a series of defections at the onset of the war, Robespierre and Danton feared the possibility of a military coup d'état copyright tat above all led by the Marquis de Lafayette, who in June advocated the suppression of the Jacobin Club. Robespierre publicly attacked him in scathing terms, General, while from the midst of your camp you declared war upon me, which you had thus far spared for the enemies of our state, while you denounced me as an enemy of liberty to the army, National Guard and nation in letters published by your purchased papers, 
I had thought myself only disputing with a general. But not yet the dictator of France, arbitrator of the state. In early June Robespierre proposed an end to the monarchy and the subordination of the assembly to the popular will. Following the king's veto of the Legislative Assembly's efforts to raise a militia and suppress non-juring priests, the monarchy faced an abortive insurrection on June 20, exactly three years after the tennis court oath. Insurrectionary forces entered Paris without the king's approval, and on August 10, 1792, these insurrectionary militias led a successful assault upon the Tuileries Palace with the intention of overthrowing the monarchy. On August 16, Robespierre presented the petition of the Commune to the Legislative Assembly, demanding the establishment of a revolutionary tribunal and the summoning of a convention chosen by universal suffrage. Dismissed from his command of the French Northern Army, Lafayette fled France along with other sympathetic officers. In September, Robespierre was elected first deputy for Paris to the National Convention. Robespierre and his allies took the benches high at the back of the hall giving them the label Le Montafnards, or the mountain. Below them were the Manaji of the Girondists and then the Plain of the Independence. The Girondists at the convention accused Robespierre of failing to stop the September massacres. On September 26, the Girondist Mark David Lassus accused Robespierre of wanting to form a dictatorship. Rumors spread that Robespierre, Marat and Danton were plotting to establish a triumvirate. On October 29, Louvet de Cavray attacked Robespierre in a speech, possibly written by Madame Roland. On November 5, Robespierre defended himself, the Jacobin Club and his supporters in and beyond Paris. Turning the accusations upon his accusers, Robespierre delivered one of the most famous lines of the French Revolution to the Assembly. Robespierre's speech marked a profound political break between the Montafnards and the Girondins strengthening the former in the context of an increasingly revolutionary situation punctuated by the fall of Louis XVI, the invasion of France and the September massacres in Paris. It also heralded increased involvement and intervention by the sans-culottes in revolutionary politics. Execution of Louis XVI, the Convention's unanimous declaration of a French Republic on September 21, 1792 left open the fate of the king. A commission was therefore established to examine evidence against him while the Convention's Legislation Committee considered legal aspects of any future trial. Most Montafnards favoured judgment and execution, while the Girondins were divided concerning Louis' fate, with some arguing for royal inviolability, others for clemency, and some advocating lesser punishment or death. On November 20, Opinion turned sharply against Louis following the discovery of a secret cache of 726 documents consisting of Louis' personal communications. Robespierre had taken ill in November and had done little other than support Saint Just in his argument against the king's inviolability. Robespierre wrote in his Defensa de la Constitution that a constitution which Louis had violated himself, and which declared his inviolability, could not now be used in his defense. Now, with the question of the king's fate occupying public discourse, Robespierre on December 3 delivered a speech that would define the rhetoric and course of Louis' trial. Robespierre argued that the king, now dethroned, could function only as a threat to liberty and national peace, and that the members of the assembly were not fair judges, but rather statesmen with responsibility for public safety. In arguing for a judgment by the elected convention without trial, Robespierre supported the recommendations of Jean Baptiste Melly who headed the commission reporting on legal aspects of Louis' trial or judgment. Unlike some Girondins, Robespierre would specifically oppose judgment by primary assemblies or a referendum, believing that this could cause civil war. While he called for a trial of Queen Marie Antoinette and the imprisonment of the Dauphin, Robespierre argued for the death penalty in the case of the king. On January 15, 1793, Louis XVI was voted guilty of conspiracy and attacks upon public safety by 691 of 749 deputies. None voted for his innocence. Four days later, 387 deputies voted for death as penalty, 334 voted for detention or a conditional death penalty, and 28 abstained or were absent. Louis was executed two days later in the Place de la Rare copyright revolution. Destruction of the Girondists After the king's execution, the influence of Robespierre, 
Danton and the pragmatic politicians increased at the expense of the Girondists. The Girondists refused to have anything more to do with Danton and because of this the government became more divided. In May 1793, Desmoulins, at the behest of Robespierre and Danton, published his Histoire des Brissotins, an elaboration on the earlier article Jean-Pierre Brichot, de copyright masque copyright, a scathing attack on Brichot and the Girondists. Maximin Isnard declared that Paris must be destroyed if it came out against the provincial deputies. Robespierre preached a moral insurrection against the corrupt deputies at the Jacobin Club. The Jacobins declared themselves in state of insurrection. On 29 May the delegates representing 33 of the Paris sections formed an insurrectionary committee. On June 2nd 80, OOO armed sans culottes surrounded the convention. After an attempt of deputies to exit collided with guns, the deputies resigned themselves to declare the arrest of 29 leading Girondins. During the insurrection Robespierre had scrawled a note in his memorandum book, Reign of Terror. After the fall of the monarchy, France faced troubles as the war and the civil war continued. A stable government was needed to quell the chaos. On March 11, 1793, a revolutionary tribunal was established by Jacobins in the convention. On April 6, the nine-member Committee of Public Safety replaced the larger Committee of General Defense. On July 27, 1793, Robespierre was elected to the committee, although he had not sought the position. The Committee of General Security began to manage the country's internal police. Terror was formally instituted as a legal policy by the Convention on September 5, 1793, in a proclamation which read, It is time that equality bore its scythe above all heads. It is time to horrify all the conspirators. So legislators, place terror on the order of the day. Let us be in revolution, because everywhere counter-revolution is being woven by our enemies. The blade of the law should hover over all the guilty. Though nominally all members of the committee were equal, Robespierre was presented during the Thermidorian reaction by the surviving protagonists of the terror, especially Bertrand Barrery, as prominent. They may have exaggerated his role to downplay their own contribution and used him as a scapegoat after his death. As an orator, he praised revolutionary government and argued that terror at least as he defined it, was necessary, laudable and inevitable. It was Robespierre's belief that the republic and virtue were of necessity inseparable. He reasoned that the republic could be saved only by the virtue of its citizens, and that a Robespierreist terror was virtuous because it attempted to maintain the revolution and the republic. For example, in his report on the principles of political morality, given on February 5, 1794, Robespierre stated, If virtue be the spring of a popular government in times of peace, the spring of that government during a revolution is virtue combined with terror, virtue, without which terror is destructive. Terror, without which virtue is impotent. Terror is only justice prompt, severe and inflexible. It is then an emanation of virtue. It is less a distinct principle than a natural consequence of the general principle of democracy, applied to the most pressing wants of the countier. The government in a revolution is the despotism of liberty against tyranny. Robespierre Euro unregistered trademark s speeches were exceptional, and he had the power to change the views of almost any audience. His speaking techniques included invocation of virtue and morals, and quite often the use of rhetorical questions in order to identify with the audience. He would gesticulate and use ideas and personal experiences in life to keep listeners' attentions. His final method was to state that he was always prepared to die in order to save the revolution. Doyle says, it is not violent fulminations that characterize Robespierre's speeches on the terror. It is the language of unmasking, unveiling, revealing, discovering, exposing the enemy within, the enemy hidden behind patriotic posturings, the language of suspicion. Because he believed that the revolution was still in progress, and in danger of being sabotaged, he made every attempt to instill in the populace and convention the urgency of carrying out the terror. Robespierre saw no room for mercy in his terror, stating that slowness of judgments is equal to impunity, and uncertainty of punishment encourages all the guilty. Throughout his report on the principles of political morality, 
Robespierre assailed any stalling of action in defense of the Republic. In his thinking, there was not enough that could be done fast enough in defense against enemies at home and abroad. A staunch believer in the teachings of Rousseau, Robespierre believed that it was his duty as a public servant to push the revolution forward, and that the only rational way to do that was to defend it on all fronts. The report did not merely call for blood but also expounded many of the original ideas of the 1789 revolution, such as political equality, suffrage and abolition of privileges. In the winter of 1793 a Euro 94, a majority of the committee decided that the Ha copyright Bertist party would have to perish or its opposition within the committee would overshadow the other factions due to its influence in the Commune of Paris. Robespierre also had personal reasons for disliking the Ha copyright Bertists for their atheism and bloodthirstiness, which he associated with the old aristocracy. In early 1794, he finally broke with Danton, who had angered many other members of the Committee of Public Safety with his more moderate views on the terror, but whom Robespierre had, until this point, persisted in defending. Subsequently, he joined in attacks on the Dantonists and the Ha copyright Bertists. Robespierre charged his opponents with complicity with foreign powers. From February 13 to March 13, 1794, Robespierre withdrew from active business on the committee due to illness. On March 15, he reappeared in the convention. Ha copyright Bert and 19 of his followers were arrested on March 19 and guillotined on March 24. Danton, Desmoulins and their friends were arrested on March 30 and guillotined on April 5. Georges Couthon, his ally on the committee, introduced and carried on June 10 the drastic law of 22 Prairial. Under this law, the tribunal became a simple court of condemnation without need of witnesses. Historians frequently debate the reasons behind Robespierre's support of the law of 22 Prairial, some consider it an attempt to extend his influence into a dictatorship, while others argue it was adopted to expedite the passage of the reformist, land redistributive Ventusay decrees. Cult of the Supreme Being Robespierre's desire for revolutionary change was not limited to the political realm. He opposed the power of the Catholic Church and the Pope, and especially was opposed to its celibacy policies. Having denounced the excesses of dechristianization, he sought to instill a spiritual resurgence in the French nation based on deist beliefs. Accordingly, on May 7, 1794, Robespierre supported a decree passed by the Convention that established an official religion, known historically as the Cult of the Supreme Being. The notion of the supreme being was based on ideas that Jean-Jacques Rousseau had outlined in the social contract. A nationwide festival of the supreme being was held on June 8. The festivities in Paris were held in the Champ de Mars, which was renamed the Champ de Lara Copyright Union for that day. This was most likely in honor of the Champ de Mars massacre where the Republicans first rallied against the power of the crown. Robespierre, who happened to be president of the convention that week, walked first in the festival procession and delivered a speech in which he emphasized his concept of a supreme being. Is it not he whose immortal hand, engraving on the heart of man the code of justice and equality, has written there the death sentence of tyrants? Is it not he who, from the beginning of time, decreed for all the ages and for all peoples liberty, good faith, and justice? He did not create kings to devour the human race. He did not create priests to harness us, like vile animals, to the chariots of kings and to give to the world examples of baseness, pride, perfidy, avarice, debauchery and falsehood. He created the universe to proclaim his power. He created men to help each other, to love each other mutually, and to attain to happiness by the way of virtue. Throughout the festival of the Supreme Being, Robespierre was beaming with joy. Not even the negativity of his colleagues could disrupt his delight. He was able to speak of the things about which he was truly passionate, including virtue and nature, typical deist beliefs, and, of course, his disagreements with atheism. Everything was arranged to the exact specifications that had been previously set before the ceremony. The ominous and symbolic guillotine had been moved to the original standing place of the Bastille. All of the people were placed in the appropriate area designated to them, and everyone was dressed accordingly. Not only was everything going smoothly, 
but the festival was also Rebesbury Euro unregistered trademark s first appearance in the public eye as an actual leader for the people, and also as president of the convention, to which he had been elected only four days earlier. While for some it was an excitement to see him at his finest, many other leaders involved in the festival agreed that Robespierre had taken things a bit too far. Multiple sources state that Robespierre came down the mountain in a way that resembled Moses as the leader of the people, and one of his colleagues, Jacques Alexis Thuriot, was heard saying, Look at the bugger. Eat a euro unregistered trademark s not enough for him to be master, he has to be God. While these words may have been a simple release of resentment at the time, this same idea would come back in an attempt to remove Robespierre from his lofty position in the very near future. Mark Guillaume Alexis Vadier used to report to the convention on Catherine Tha copyright art as an opportunity to attack Robespierre and his beliefs. Tha copyright art who was a 78-year-old, self-declared prophetess, who had, at one point, been imprisoned in the Bastille. By stating that Robespierre was the herald of the last days, prophet of the new dawn Catherine Tha copyright art made it seem that Robespierre had made these claims himself, to her. Many of her followers were also supporters or friends of Robespierre, which made it seem as if he were attempting to create a new religion, with himself as its god. Although Robespierre had nothing to do with Catherine the copyright or her followers, many assumed that he was on a path to dictatorship, and it sent a current of fear throughout the convention, contributing to his downfall the following July. Downfall On May 23, 1794, only one day after the attempted assassination of Calotte de Bois, Robespierre's life was also in danger, as a young woman by the name of car copyright Kiel Renault was arrested after having approached his place of residence with two small knives. She was executed one month later. At this point, the decree of 22 Prairial was introduced to the public without the consultation from the Committee of General Security, which, in turn, doubled the number of executions permitted by the Committee of Public Safety. This law permitted executions to be carried out even under simple suspicion of citizens thought to be counter-revolutionaries without extensive trials. When Robespierre allowed this law to be passed, the people of France began to question him and the committee because they were executing people for seemingly meaningless reasons, and also because they had passed a law without the help of the Committee of General Security. This was part of the beginning of Robespierre's downfall. Reports were coming into Paris about excesses committed by the envoys sent en mission to the provinces, particularly Jean Lambert Tallien in Bordeaux and Joseph Foucher copyright in Lyon. Robespierre tirelessly worked almost alone, having been opposed by other leading political figures and accused of being a counter-revolutionary for his relative moderation, to curb their excesses having them recalled to Paris to account for their actions and then expelling them from the Jacobin Club. They, however, evaded arrest. Foucher copyright spent the evenings moving house to house, warning members of the convention that Robespierre was after them, whilst organizing a coup d'état copyright tat. Robespierre appeared at the convention on July 26, and delivered a two-hour-long speech. He defended himself against charges of dictatorship and tyranny, and then proceeded to warn of a conspiracy against the Republic. Specifically, he railed against the bloody excesses he had observed during the Terror. He also implied that members of the Convention were a part of this conspiracy, though when pressed he refused to provide any names. The speech, however, alarmed members, particularly given Foucher copyright s warnings. These members who felt that Robespierre was alluding to them tried to prevent the speech from being printed, and a bitter debate ensued until Barra forced an end to it. Later that evening, Robespierre delivered the same speech again at the Jacobin Club, where it was very well received. The following day, Saint just began to give a speech in support of Robespierre. However, those who had seen him working on his speech the night before expected accusations to arise from it. Saint just had time to give only a small part of his speech before Jean Lambert Tallien interrupted him. While the accusations began to pile up, Saint just remained uncharacteristically silent. Robespierre then attempted to secure the Tribune to speak, but his voice was shouted down. Robespierre soon found himself at a loss for words after one deputy called for his arrest. Another deputy, Mark Guillaume Alexis Vadia, gave a mocking impression of him. 
when one deputy realized Robespierre's inability to respond, the man shouted, the blood of Danton chokes him. Robespierre then finally regained his voice to reply with his one recorded statement of the morning, demanding to know why, when he had been the only one left protecting Danton in the end, he was now being blamed for the other man's death, is it Danton you regret? Cowards! Why didn't you defend him? Arrest, the convention ordered the arrest of Robespierre, his brother Augustin, Couthon, Saint Just, Frenet Section Wa Henriot, and Le Baz. Troops from the Commune, under General Capinal, arrived to free the prisoners and then marched against the convention itself. The convention responded by ordering troops of its own under Barras to be called out. When the Commune's troops heard the news of this, order began to break down, and Henriot ordered his remaining troops to withdraw to the Hartel de Ville, where Robespierre and his supporters also gathered. The convention declared them to be outlaws, meaning that upon verification the fugitives could be executed within 24 hours without a trial. As the night went on, the forces of the Commune deserted the Hartel de Ville and, at around two in the morning, those of the convention under the command of Barras arrived there. In order to avoid capture, Augustin Robespierre threw himself out of a window, only to break both of his legs. Couthon was found lying at the bottom of a staircase. Le Bas committed suicide. And another radical shot himself in the head. Robespierre tried to kill himself with a pistol but managed only to shatter his lower jaw, although some eyewitnesses claim that Robespierre was shot by Charles Andrew copyright murder. Execution. For the remainder of the night, Robespierre was moved to a table in the room of the Committee of Public Safety where he awaited execution. He lay on the table bleeding abundantly until a doctor was brought in to attempt to stop the bleeding from his jaw. Robespierre's last recorded words may have been Merci, Monsieur, to a man who had given him a handkerchief for the blood on his face and clothing. Later, Robespierre was held in the same containment chamber where Marie Antoinette, the wife of King Louis XVI, had been held. The next day, July 28, 1794, Robespierre was guillotined without trial in the Place de la Rare copyright revolution. His brother Augustin, Couthon, Saint Just, Henriot, and twelve other followers, among them the cobbler Antoine Simon, the jailer of Louis Charles, Dauphin of France, were also executed. When clearing Robespierre's neck, the executioner tore off the bandage that was holding his shattered jaw in place, causing Robespierre to produce an agonized scream until the fall of the blade silenced him. Together with those executed with him, he was buried in a common grave at the newly opened Arances Cemetery. A plaque indicating the former site of the Semisha Rue des Arances is located at 97 Rue de Monceau, Paris 75008. Between 1844 and 1859, the remains of all those buried there were moved to the catacombs of Paris. Legacy and Memory Maximilien Robespierre remains a controversial figure to this day. Apart from one metro station in Montreuil and several streets named after him in about 20 towns, there are no memorials nor monuments to him in France. By making himself the embodiment of virtue and of total commitment, he took control of the revolution in its most radical and bloody phase a Euro the Jacobin Republic. His goal in the terror was to use the guillotine to create what he called a republic of virtue, wherein terror and virtue, his principles, would be imposed. He argued, terror is nothing more than speedy, severe and inflexible justice. It is thus an emanation of virtue. It is less a principle in itself, than a consequence of the general principle of democracy, applied to the most pressing needs of the patri. Terror was thus a tool to accomplish his overarching goals for democracy. Historian Ruth Skur wrote that as for Robespierre's vision for France he wanted a democracy for the people, who are intrinsically good and pure of heart. A democracy in which poverty is honorable, power innocuous, and the vulnerable safe from oppression. A democracy that worships nature a year or not nature as it really is, cruel and disgusting, but nature sanitized, majestic, and, above all, good. In terms of historiography, he has several defenders. Marxist historian Albert Sobul viewed most of the measures of the Committee for Public Safety necessary for the defense of the revolution and mainly regretted the destruction of the Ha copyright Bertists and other Inraga copyright s. 
Robespierre's main ideal was to ensure the virtue and sovereignty of the people. He disapproved of any acts which could be seen as exposing the nation to counter-revolutionaries and traitors, and became increasingly fearful of the defeat of the revolution. He instigated the terror and the deaths of his peers as a measure of ensuring a republic of virtue. But his ideals went beyond the needs and wants of the people of France. He became a threat to what he had wanted to ensure and the result was his downfall. He was a bourgeois. Albert Sobel, according to Ishay, argues that he and Saint Just were too preoccupied in defeating the interest of the bourgeoisie to give their total support to the sans culottes, and yet too attentive to the needs of the sans culottes to get support from the middle class. For Marxists like Sobel, Robespierre's petty bourgeois class interests were fatal to his mission. Jonathan Israel is sharply critical of Robespierre for repudiating the true values of the radical Enlightenment. He argues, Jacobin ideology and culture under Robespierre was an obsessive Russist moral puritanism steeped in authoritarianism, anti-intellectualism, and xenophobia, and it repudiated free expression, basic human rights, and democracy. Robespierre has continued to fascinate biographers. Notable recent books in English include Colin Hayden in William Doyle's Robespierre, John Hardman's Robespierre, Ruth Skurr's Fatal Purity, Robespierre and the French Revolution, Otto J. Scott's Robespierre, The Voice of Virtue, and most recently Robespierre, A Revolutionary Life by Peter McPhee. Cultural Depictions Samuel Taylor Coleridge together with Robert Salvey wrote a verse drama, The Fall of Robespierre in 1794. Written so soon after Robespierre's execution, it may be regarded as the first literary portrayal of the man. Much of the material was drawn from contemporary newspaper accounts of the events in Paris. In Victor Hugo's novel Les Mises copyright Rabels, Robespierre and Rousseau are deeply admired by the character in Jolras, leader of the student revolutionaries. In another novel by Hugo, Quatre Vingtres, Robespierre is featured in the Three God scene, along with Danton and Marat. Robespierre is a significant character in the 1912 novel The Gods Are Athirst by Anatole France, winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature. Robespierre is a significant character in the Roger Brooks series of historical novels written by Dennis Wheatley. Robespierre's dispute against Joseph Foucher copyright, and the coup against Robespierre are described in Stefan Zweig's 1929 biography of Foucher copyright, Portrait of a Politician. He appears frequently in The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness M. Oscar Mulkey. Robespierre is featured in the 1835 play Danton's Death, written by German playwright Georg Bar 1 quarter chner. John Eaton wrote an opera, Danton and Robespierre in 1978. He plays an important role in the short story The Mida from Neil Gaiman's The Sandman, serving as the antagonist to Lady Johanna Constantine's protagonist. His name is mentioned in the Primal Scream song 2013 as the band bemoan the lack of revolutionary spirit in the modern age, one of the two primary plot lines of Catherine Neville's 1988 novel The Eight features Robespierre alongside other famous figures of the French Revolution. In the 1927 silent film Napoli copyright on, he is played by Edmund Bandola. Although this six-hour-long epic is about the rise of Napoleon, it does incorporate aspects of Robespierre's presence. The 1944 cartoon Booby Hatched features a duckling named Robespierre. In the 1949 film Reign of Terror, Robespierre is played as a bloodthirsty tyrant by Richard Bashart. Robespierre is a central character in Hilary Mantel's novel A Place of Greater Safety, along with Camille Desmoulins and Georges Jacques Danton. He plays a supporting role in, one, A Far Better Rest, a reimagining of A Tale of Two Cities, by American author Suzanne Allen. The 1964 Doctor Who serial The Reign of Terror concerns the involvement in this period of history of the time-traveling Doctor and his friends. In the 1983 French and Polish film Danton, Robespierre is played by Wojciech Sonayak. The film is based on the Danton case by Stanislaw Wopsibusiewska. In the 1989 film Laura Copyright Volution for the Section S, he is played by Anzech Surin. This film spans six hours, or the entire revolution from 1789 to 1794. In Frank Wildhorn's 1997 musical The Scarlet Pimpernel, Robespierre, played by David Cromwell in the original Broadway cast, 
makes a brief appearance. In the French Revolution, a 2005 History Channel documentary, he is played by George Ivascu. The 1996 Marge Piercy novel City of Darkness, City of Light features Robespierre as one of six first-person characters. Brooklyn-based punk band Team Robespierre is named after him. It is customary for practitioners of socionics to refer to the logical intuitive introvert personality type as Robespierre, who is a recognized representative of the type. Famous British children's series Chuckle Vision has featured Robespierre as a villain trying to steal the Countess and defeat the Purple Pimple. Citizen Robespierre calls himself the best swordsman of France. Featured in series 17 and 18. In N.D. Wilson's novel The Dragon's Tooth, Maximilien Robespierre is an immortal man, functioning as a main villain in the story. A highly idealized Robespierre is featured in the anime and manga series Rosa Versailles by Ryoko Ikeda. Shown as his younger and more idealistic self, he becomes closer to the embittered leader. Voiced by Katsuji Mori. A more cruel and ruthless portrayal of Robespierre is featured in Toa Bakata's novel Le Chevalier d'Ian. Voiced by Takahiro Sakurai. Note that this version dies at the end of the series, at which point another character named Robin is revealed to have taken up his name and cause. It is Robin, not the true Robespierre, that the series indicates took part in the French Revolution. Romain Roland published a drama about Robespierre in 1939. In the Hernalverse novels he is represented as Robert S. Pierre, leader of the Committee for Public Safety in its revolution and reign over the People's Republic of Haven. The Spanish writer Javier Garcaz Nchez published in 2012 his novel Robespierre an extensive study of his personality and ideas with a solid historical background. Robespierre is featured as a minor villain in the DreamWorks movie Mr. Peabody and Sherman when the movie's central characters travel to France just before the reign of terror occurs and have to escape from him. Robespierre is rumored to appear in the 2014 game Assassin's Creed Unity. References Further reading, Bienvenue, Richard, ed. The Ninth of Mida, The Fall of Robespierre, Carr, John Robespierre, The Force of Circumstance. New York, St. Martina Euro Unregistered Trademark Espressa, Coburn, Alfred. The Fundamental Ideas of Robespierre, English Historical Review Vol. 63, No. 246, PPA 29 Euro 51 JSTOR, Coburn, Alfred. The Political Ideas of Maximilien Robespierre During the Period of the Convention, English Historical Review Vol. 61, No. 239, PPA 45 a Euro 80 in JSTOR, Doyle, William, Hayden, Colin. Robespierre. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN A 0 521 59116 3. A collection of essays covering not only Robespierre's thoughts and deeds but also the way he has been portrayed by historians and fictional writers alike. Reviewed at the Wayback Machine by Hilary Mantle in the London Review of Books, Vol. A 22, No. A 7, March 30, 2000. Egan, James Michael. Maximilien Robespierre, Nationalist Dictator. New York, Octagon Books. ISBN A 0-374-92440-7. Presents Robespierre as the Origin of Fascist Dictators. Goldstein Sapinor, Alyssa. Robespierre, Old Regime Feminist. Gender, The Late Eighteenth Century, and the French Revolution Revisited, Journal of Modern History Vol. 82, No. 1. PPA 1 the Euro 29 and JSTOR argues he was an early feminist, but by 1793 he joined the other Jacobins who excluded women from political and intellectual life. Hampson, Norman. The Life and Opinions of Maximilien Robespierre. London, Duckworth. ISBN A 0 7156 0741-3 A presents three contrasting views, Linton, Marisa. Robespierre and the Terror, History Today, August 2006, Bulimia 56, IC8, PPA 23 Euro 29 online at the Wayback Machine, McPhee, Peter. Robespierre, A Revolutionary Life. New Haven, Connecticut, Yale University Press. 
ISBN A0300118112A. Scholarly Biography, Mitrat, Jean Robespierre, or The Tyranny of the Majority. New York, Charles Scribner A Euro Unregistered Trademark S. Sons. ISBN A0-684-14055-1A, Palmer, Ara 12 Who Ruled, The Year of Terror in the French Revolution. Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton University Press. ISBN A0-691-05119-4A Sympathetic Study of the Committee of Public Safety. Rue de Copyright, George. Robespierre, Portrait of a Revolutionary Democrat. New York, Viking Press. ISBN A 0-670-60128-4A Marxist Political Portrait of Robespierre, Examining His Changing Image Among Historians and the Different Aspects of Robespierre as an Ideologue, as a Political Democrat, as a Social Democrat, as a Practitioner of Revolution, as a Politician and as a Popular Leader Leader of Revolution. It also touches on his legacy for the future revolutionary leaders Vladimir Lenin and Mao Zedong. Sharma, Simon. Citizens, a Chronicle of the French Revolution. New York, Alfred A. North. ISBN A 0-394-55948-7A Revisionist Account. Ska, Ruth. Fatal Purity, Robespierre and the French Revolution. London. Metropolitan Books, 2006. Reviewed at the Wayback Machine by Hilary Mantle in the London Review of Books, Vol. A28 No. A8, April 20, 2006. Reviewed by Satya Hazari Singh in the Times Literary Supplement, June 7, 2006. Shulim, Joseph I. Robespierre and the French Revolution, American Historical Review 82 No. 1 PPA 20 Euro 38 and JSTOR, Sobul, Albert. Robespierre and the Popular Movement of 1793 Euro 4, Past and Present, No. A5, PPA 54 Euro 70 and JSTOR, Tishkoff, Doris. Empire of Beauty. New Haven, Presser, Thompson, James M. Robespierre. Oxford, Blackwell Publishers. ISBN A 0-631-15504X A traditional biography with extensive and reliable research. External links, Maximilien Robespierre Internet Archive on Marxists.org, Maximilien Robespierre, 1758 Euro 1794, The French Revolution, Robespierre, Family Tree, Remembering the Reign of Terror by Dolan Cummings, Spiked Review of Books, Issue No. 7, November 2007, AMRID, in French.